Uh, hello to everybody. Today I'll be covering the new features and enhancements which have been rolled out in Physics AI version 2024.1. Here's the agenda for my presentation. Um, the majority of the improvements are in data visualization and some new results are being supported. Uh, also, we now support uh, training on data which does not have any contour results. So we'll go through all these items one by one. One of the major improvements uh, coming in version 2024.1 is training models with multiple result types. So earlier, uh, if you recall, we could only train a single model for displacement or stresses. Uh, so one would need multiple models to predict different results. Uh, starting with 24.1, we have the ability to train a single model for multiple result types. Uh, not only can we combine different contours together. For example, you can have one model uh, train and predict on both displacements and stresses, but uh, you can also combine a vector and a contour. Vector in this case could be used for KPI prediction. Uh, so, you know, custom results which are not originally part of the simulation file, uh, but physics AI model can learn to predict both of uh, both types of results. Transfer learning is enabled by default. Um, earlier it was hidden behind an environmental variable. Now it's easily available as part of the training model GUI. Uh, of course, uh, there are certain restrictions to get meaningful transfer learning. Uh, so the first thing to keep in mind is that the width, the depth, and the input features used for the pre-trained model should be the same for the new model. Okay, that's the minimum requirement. Uh, the parts need to be the same, uh, and mind you, these are parts, not meshes. What I mean by that is if you if the original uh, model was trained on, um, let's say, uh, a bracket and a pin, then you want to make sure that the new model also is similar to that uh, and doesn't just come up with something new, uh, in which case the transfer learning will not be affected. Uh, there is flexibility in the output field dimensionality. So for example, a pre-trained model on stress can be used uh, for uh, transfer learning to train on displacement, or um, you could have different dimensions, so maybe even a KPI. Uh, so there is flexibility in the output that we can train on, but the inputs should be the same. So uh, very quickly, I'm going to uh, show you in HyperStudy how this, uh, sorry, HyperMesh, how this looks. Um, so if I go to model training, you can see that earlier, while only one result could be selected to train on, now I can check multiple results. Of course, uh, keep in mind that the more results you ask it to predict, the more data it will need to, to train on. But I can even select uh, vectors uh, or the KPIs and uh, and the contours. And when you go to testing, um, so this is a model that I've trained. As you can see, uh, for the test data, I see two different MAE values. One is for the displacement contour, and the other one is for a custom KPI. And both of those results are displayed uh, together. So you have the ability to, to look at the prediction. So this is the KPI. And on the right-hand side, you see the contours. For uh, predictions involving multiple contours, uh, you can switch between those by interacting with the hyperview session as, as uh, you know, through the results uh, toolbar as you normally do. Next item we have is the visualization settings. So now we enable the storage of the visualization settings from the last data point. And for subsequent data points which are opened up, uh, those settings remain. So to demo this, I'm again going to switch to HyperMesh. So I'm going to open a model here. Going to model testing.
Let's see again. Looks like a bug, but let's see if I can get you another view. Okay, I have a backup session here. Let's take this for example. Um, and if I now take a section um, and then I take a similar section here, um, and then I change the default orientation to look something like this. And just to Let's change the plane of this to Z. And same thing here. So clearly now I've oriented the part and also taken a section. So now when I switch to a different data point, these settings are going to be saved. Um, and the new data point will also be displayed in a similar orientation and the cutting planes will also show up in the same way. So it's a bit convenient to switch and compare between the different data points. The KPI visualization has also been improved. Uh, now we have two different types of visualization. So depending upon whether the KPI is a scalar value, uh, we can either display a scatter or if it's a time dependent response or a vector value, we actually display the, the curves. Um, and not only that, we display the distribution of the KPIs for all the test points so that um, all of them can be compared simultaneously at one point in time. So let's take a look. Wrong file. So here you can see that the KPI in this case is a scalar value, which is the moment of inertia. And I have five data points. Um, so all the five data points are plotted. Um, as a uh, in the coordinate system of true versus predicted. So good predictions would lie along the, uh, the you know, the 45 degree diagonal. Uh, of course, these the models I'm showing you are for demo only. So this technically looks like a bad prediction, but if you train a model properly with, with correct data, they should be more aligned along the, the, uh, the diagonal. Similarly, if your KPI has, uh, you know, a vector, plot, a contour rather, uh, that would be displayed uh, as you see on the right hand side of the screen. Um, in this case, the truth and predicted curves are on top of each other. Otherwise, the blue and red would show up separately. And the gray points in, in the background are all the other remaining data points, uh, just to give you an idea for the distribution or the spread of those test points. Another major update in this feature is the support for modal results. So we can take out of phase and in phase results and we can now train and predict on those. So I'm going to go back to the example I showed you earlier. So you can see that these are out of phase results, uh, but we are able to flag them as such and train on them, uh, which is a new feature. And just to give you an idea of how the training looks like, uh, when you go to the training model window, you'll have a subcase uh, with the result eigen mode, uh, which can be used for modal results training. We can now train using uh, files which do not have contour data. So before 
uh, we would need at least some dummy contour data, and that was a limitation. Now, with this new feature, uh, we can create data sets from mesh only files. So, if you have KPIs coming in from physical experimentation, um, we can use that data. And to support some inputs, uh, we supply like a FEM or a RAD deck, and we can predict KPIs coming from um, you know, those mesh files. So to give you a glimpse of what this looks like, So I have created a data, data set here. Uh, and you can see that instead of using H3D files, I've used the RAD files. Um, and we can create and train uh, models just the regular way. Uh, the only difference is instead of using H3Ds, now we use mesh files such as RAD or FEM. And the process of creating these data sets is similar to, uh, you know, the, to how we proceed with H3Ds. But instead of the filter, which right here says H3D, all you have to do is uh, change it to RAD or FEM, and the files that are filtered out will be displayed in the window. So it's a seamless uh, interface for the user. That's the end of my presentation.